I'm Gordon Quinn uh, from Cartamquin Films, and we also are content producers. Uh, we started as a small business. Uh, many years ago, we evolved into a not-for-profit. Uh, but I think there are a lot of opportunities for public and private opportuni- uh, partnerships in this area. Uh, some of our work most well-known is uh, Hoop Dreams, uh, The New Americans, Milking the Rhino about community-based conservation in Africa, uh, and many other films. A lot of our work uh, shows on PBS, but we're also on NBC. Uh, we also have experimented with iTunes and Hulu uh, as a way of getting our work to the public. Um, I actually went to the University of Chicago over 40 years ago, uh, so I have a tendency uh, to come back to first principles, and I think it's wonderful that you've come to the city of Chicago, because this is a place with a real history in terms of media and community and public space and the battles that have been fought around that. And I just want to say I echo everything that was said on the first panel, particularly the people from the city of Chicago, who I think were really talking about one of the key issues, which is it's not just access, it's what you can do with that access and what kind of skills and training you've had to be able to utilize it. But I just want to read a quote from John Dewey uh, because I think it, it raises another dimension of this. Artists have always been the real purveyors of the news, for it's not the outward happening itself which is new, but the kindling by it of emotion, perception, and appreciation. And so one of the things that I get concerned about, or what I see, people come to us, we're a community uh, organization institution, they want to get on the web, Uh, they may be a community organization, they may be a small business, they want to tell their story, and once they're on the web, once they have that access, how do they actually tell the story? What's the narrative? What's the emotional, human content? Uh, It can be... You know, many years ago we used to do industrials, and there are industrials that are hard for people to watch, and there are industrials when you have the right audience, they're like right there with you because they know how to tell a story. So I think that's a that's an important uh, dimension. Um, I think that with the FCC, as broadband evolves, one of the things I become concerned about is regulation. Because regulations are good. Regulations have had a real history in this city. Uh, You know, however broadband rolls out, it's using the public airwaves or they're tearing up our streets and alleys and putting in cables or they're on, uh, you know, they're on the telephone poles. And we need to see universal service. We need to see accessibility. Uh, People talked about neighborhoods. People talked, uh, I think, earlier about the disabled. Uh, and language issues. Uh, There's also, in Illinois, we have a tremendous rural population that we want to be connected to, and I think it's important to think about those rural uh, uh, populations. Uh, It's very important uh, to understand that the providers of broadband cannot be competing with their own content or content which they're getting some extra pay for. That creates an unfair advantage to them. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know net neutrality isn't the word that's being used right now, but whatever that is that levels that playing field and makes sure we can't be uh, exploited in that way. And just a little piece of history. Um, We have a terrific public access uh, situation here in Chicago. We have a big institution. Many of the people that are helping small businesses and communities to get on the net with content, got their training at the big public access facility that came out of the city really demanding things back from the cable companies when they got the franchises to to lay the cables. This was years ago. This was in the 70s. But when we were fighting for it, there would be 200 people in a room representing all of these different organizations. There was leadership people from all kinds of organizations, communities, neighborhoods. The, the churches uh, saw a tremendous potential in this, and it sort of played out. And so I think we, in thinking about how broadband should roll out, we should look at some of the lessons learned from public access, and we should also look at some of the things that have undercut it. Uh, the ways in which now, as public access is now going to be possibly on broadband, and seeing that it's going to be 
you know, they want to put it on a lower tier so it's harder for users to find it and for the, for the people who want to see it to find it. Uh, I'll maybe just close uh, real quickly uh, with, again, a restatement of what we want. We want equal access to the net for content creators and the public. The danger of service providers favoring their own or product content or money products that they can make money from uh, caring is at the heart of the issue and in some sense is already here. Thank you.